from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. We heard from KJ Hamler and Ronald Darby this week. I thought we'd talk a little bit of Ben about some of the things we heard from them. Let's start with KJ Hamler. And we found out, and I know we talked a little bit about this on Broncos Country Tonight, the radio show, but we talked a little bit about how he had not only the ACL injury that he's rehabbing, but also a hip injury. And that has affected a bit of his off season. Yeah. Um, you know, the compound nature of an injury like that ACL and the hip, that can make rehab tough. Because you're already, when you're hurt, you're trying to compensate for something else and trying to get back in. When you got two things going on, you're double trying to compensate for all that. That can really hurt. But, you know, he's he's running 19, what do you say, 19, 20 miles an hour on the radar gun any day now. He'll pass you in speed, and uh, you know, and then, he'll, then he gets closer to, to catching up to, uh, you know, middling speed here. Me, me famously losing to Steve Atwater with a bum knee. Mm-hmm. Steve and had the bum knee, not you. Yeah, I want to make sure we're not making excuses for you losing. <laughs> we are not making excuses. I lost that one. And I, it, again, my ego is writing checks that my body could not cash. So KJ Hamler talking a bit about that. He also talked about how he envisions himself in the Tyler Lockett role in this offense. Now we've talked a little bit about that as a possibility as, Hey, you could use this guy's speed in that kind of role. I, I loved that specifically from KJ coming off of the injury, even if that, but really just saying, no, the, I, I match up from a skill set position to what, what Tyler Lockett does. He's got a little ways to go to prove that, but I like sort of setting the bar there. I mean, he kind of does. He's kind of diet Tyler Lockett. If you look at it, I think Tyler's a, you know, a little bit more athletic uh, overall and certainly has been less injury prone and, and, uh, and all that's been more consistent, more reliable. That's not to say KJ can't grow into that, but right now I, you know, um, but setting the bar there, that's, setting, that's what mean, it should be. Sure. Yeah. That, that, that should be your goal. That's the archetype. That's the right, you know, that's the right uh, physical archetype, speed set, skill set, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if that's what he's gunning towards trying to be, Hey, I'm here for it. That's uh, there are certainly worse things to be. No, and, and that's where I sort of feel like if the Broncos are going, if, if he becomes that for the Broncos, if he becomes the next Tyler Lockett mm-hmm. for Denver, that is going to be a, a tremendous value. So all the people right now that have been up to this point, maybe questioning a little bit, you go Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, back-to-back wide receivers, already having Cortland Sun and Tim Patrick here. That's where all of a sudden it's like, you don't have that guy on the roster. So, I mean, you don't have Tyler Lockett until he proves that he can be that. So I, I, I just like him setting the bar. I also loved... Um, KJ Hamler, just for another moment, sort of talking about how what players go through in the, the when when they're not near the team and and how difficult that can be. And I I just don't think it gets said enough. You know, oftentimes when it comes to to players to athletes, I think it's usually the perception of they're an athlete. That's pretty much all they care about. That's pretty much all they do. And and a lot of these young men, I mean, again, they they've been playing football their whole life, and all of a sudden you take that away and you take away the access to to other their teammates. It can be significant. That's been a point of contention for a long time now, is because you kind of take away the support system. Yeah, that people have, and um, you know, all, all your boys, you can't go be around. You can't go do things. You can't, and so it really does take away the support system that a lot of these guys have, and and it can really just be a which I think I think is stupid. I think the NFL needs to revisit that. There are some things that uh, that just don't make sense when it comes to that stuff. So. Um, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Now let's go to Ronald Darby. And I loved what he had to say about Pat Sertan. And he said, he thinks he's a pro bowler this year. He said he thought he was a pro bowler last year. And, and, and he says what he loves so much about him is how fast you pick things up. Hmm. And that's something we remarked on very early in the last off season about how he, like everybody that we talked to, he just never seemed like he got lost out there. And, 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 you know, we look back on his rookie year and what the expectations were when you're in the ninth overall pick as a cornerback, we've seen guys that are top end cornerbacks taken in the draft. The guy out of Detroit a few years back, Jeff Akuda. Yeah, Jeff Akuda was was supposed to be generational. Mm-hmm. Boy, he had a really really rough rookie year. You think back on it, and I know that we don't usually grade things th- these things on a curve, mm-hmm. but if you give it a little bit of context, that's really impressive. Yeah, I, I think Pat's going to be a uh, Pat Sertan's going to be a star. You know, in this league, I really do. I always have. He was my top corner in the in the draft class. I uh, love the lineage. I uh, loved his dad. His dad and I still chat on Twitter every now and again. We used to give each other a little bit of uh, a little bit of guff back in the day. But um, he's uh, I, he's he's had a good upbringing. He understands the the fundamentals of the position at, at someone far above his age. Uh, and and he's a great athlete on top of it. I think the combination of things make will make for a great player. There are going to be mistakes here, there, sure, but. Um, you know, I thought he acquitted himself extremely well in his rookie year, learning a complicated defense like that. And I think that this new defense plays more to his strengths than the last one did. And Ronald Darby also talked a little bit about having a lot of the guys back. Bryce Callahan's really the only mainstay starter guy that's not here. Mm-hmm. They brought back Kareem Jackson. They have Justin Simmons here. 
He's there. Pat Sertan. They've got a lot of returning faces. He thinks that's going to only help their communication in the secondary. Last thing here, talking about Russell Wilson. I loved how he, there was some joking moments, but he was talking about Russell Wilson putting his, his football pants on. And then mm-hmm. there was a lot of back and forth in the media about putting football pants on. But I, I, I like the mindset of that because Russell Wilson's here to work. And he even gave a little bit of an example of how even when the defense is running drills or doing whatever stuff on the field, he said, Coach Hackett and Russell Wilson are watching the defense. Like if they don't have if they don't have something going on, he's like he's that in tune with what's going on with the entirety of the team, not just his own role. And I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I think that's very impressive. And I think that uh, uh, in the modern NFL, as a player, you have to be you have to know everything that's going on. You can't just specialize into your role. You got to know everything that's going on with the defense. It helps you fundamentally understand where you need to be if something breaks down. And, and I think that's a, a valuable and vital skill set is big and and it's a mindset too as he's talking about putting the football pants on it's a mindset that just basically is everywhere across the organization it's like we're all showing up to work Mm -hmm. we're all showing up with this mindset that we're not going to let each other down because there's somebody that's going to hold us accountable and that accountable is the word that constantly got thrown around over the last couple years of not feeling like there was a lot of that around here accountability sets the standard yeah you know you can talk about standards and you can talk about things like that but if you don't have accountability for not meeting the standard then that's a problem and, and having each other be accountable for each other does it helps reinforce that standard And if someone's not meeting it it's applying corrective action to that person uh it's applying and whether that corrective action is, is additional training or whether it's discipline but it's applying corrective action to that and then elevating them back above the standard mm-hmm. good stuff for benjamin albright i'm ryan edwards thanks for watching broncos country tonight